Welcome back. In this brief lesson, I'd like to talk about the app manifest file. So every app project must have an associated Android manifest.xml file. So what is this file and why does Android Studio needs this file? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. And then I'll also give you a demo of what this app looks like. And of course, we'll be working with this as we create an app or two and work with different features within Android Studio, you'll get pretty comfortable with the manifest file.xml. So before the Android Studio system can actually start an app component, the system would start know that the component exists by reading the app's manifest file. So it's just like an index, right? So think of this as the table of contents, right? So it's referring the application itself refers back to the manifest file. And if it finds an entry in that file, it will execute. The manifest file describes essential information about the application itself that you're developing to the Android build tools. So as you make changes to the app, let's say you add another image view or let's say text view or do some coding and build your application, it's going to refer to the manifest file which contains all of the essential information the components of the app which includes all activities services broadcast receivers and content providers and these are again keywords that you need to kind of take a look at so it includes everything if it's missing something your app is not going to run it's going to throw an error the permissions that the app needs in order to access protected parts of the system or other apps is also provided by the manifest file and the hardware and software features the app requires, which affects which devices can install the app from Google Play. So you get the idea, right? The, the fundamental concept is that this is the main file that contains all of the entries that your app needs to run successfully, right? So it needs to contain all of the app components, basically. All right, let's take a look at the demo. So let me show you what the Android manifest.xml file looks like. So I'm going to switch to the Android Studio. Perfect. So once I'm in the Android Studio, in order for me to navigate to the manifest.xml file, I'd have to, from the left navigation pane here, let's click on the drop down arrow and let's navigate to Android. And within Android, I should be able to see a folder called manifest folder, which contains the Android manifest.xml file. And I would, of course, just simply click twice on this file, and this is going to go ahead and open the file for me. Now, let's go through this file very briefly. Now, this is a very basic Android manifest.xml file because that's the app that we're actually creating. The package name is app, and it's just, just one activity screen, right? So you don't see a whole lot of things. So I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to also uh, demonstrate some of the more complex manifest files. But here simply you'll notice that this XML file contains an application tag with, with an ending application tag. And within the application itself, you will see several activities. You'll also see intent filter. Briefly, what is an intent? So think of intent like the word says it is, right? So this is something that you wish to do. So at this point in time, the activity itself or the intent filter would contain necessary actions that need to be executed. Let me give you an example, a simple example. Let's say you have two Android screens. The first screen has a button. If you click on the button, it'll take you to screen number two. Well, you need to build an intent filter. So every time there's an intent to do something or take an action, you will need an intent filter. So here, with an intent, you'll notice there action and then there's category so that way you can build the android dot a manifest file and we know that android dot manifest dot xml file contains all of the ad, app components so your app will not run successfully if any of these are missing let me give you another example before i switch to the more complex and more advanced version of the android manifest dot xml file because as your app grows the Android manifest file will contain additional entries as well. So the example that I'm going to provide here is, for instance, if you need to connect to your 
SQL server or database or any external source on the internet, right? So your manifest file within this application that you're developing must contain a few additional entries that would tell the app, go look in the manifest file, and if you find the entry to get on the internet, it will then execute, okay? And the common example is, let's say you wish to create a Google sign-in button on your app or a Facebook sign-in button on your app. Well, both of these are external, right? So you need to create additional entries within the manifest file in order to link up with Google sign-in. All right, next I'm going to demonstrate another app. I'm going to open up another app, and then I'm going to demonstrate the Android manifest file for that particular app. Perfect. So I've opened up another app, which is known as Deliver K. And this app contains several Kotlin files and for several activity files. Let's navigate to the manifest file for this particular application so you can actually see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Project and then select Android. Expand the manifest folder. And here's the Android manifest.xml file. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Perfect. So notice this particular Android manifest.xml file contains several additional entries within the XML tags itself. And one of the tags, for example, in line number seven, we have created or have created the user's permission Android name dot internet. So this would allow your app to access the internet for any resource, right? They wish to access on the internet. Similarly, you have application itself, you have activity, you have intent filters, and then you have additional activities as well. So this manifest file also contains activities that relate to other pages or other Kotlin files. For instance, the dot user sign in activity, the dot sign in activity, dot register activity, all these are related to, let me in fact show you on the left side, expand the Java folder. So here are all the files. So now, each one of these files that contain code are reflected in the manifest file, okay? So again, just wanted to give you an idea, a solid understanding of what Android manifest.xml file contains. It also contains your theme. So if you were to change the app theme here, it's gonna work, or if you change it in your app itself, and not in the manifest file, of course, you are going to get an error. Okay, so I hope this helps. Take a look at some of these uh, manifest.xml files, read up on it also. I'm going to give you some resources as well. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.